From new lock screen controls to customizing your quick settings, new camera options, insane widget upgrades, and a lot more. Get ready, because I'm going to show you everything new with One UI 7. Okay, so the first thing I had to show you guys was the brand new widget styles because they got a massive update. So if you tap and hold down on the home screen and open up widgets, straight away you'll see some redesigned widgets. But if you open up like clocks, for example, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different widget options because they now all come in three different sizes. So you can now choose to have a much smaller clock than you had before. But if you decide you don't like that size, you can just drag the corner to resize the widget. Another brand new option I really like is let's say you add the gallery widget. Widgets. As per usual, you can choose whatever image it is you want to display, but if you tap and hold on it and access settings again, you'll now see there's different shape options to choose from. And this is not just on the gallery widget, but on almost every widget. And just like the clock widget, this one also comes in three main different sizes. Then there's even new widget options. Like under calendar, for example, you can now choose a countdown widget. And how it works is once you tap it, it then opens up your calendar and you can choose the day you want to count down to. You can even select a custom image. So I just went for a little Christmas theme option. And what I also really like is as you resize this widget, the image just fills the entire block and it just looks so good. So there's a ton of different ways to completely change up and customize every widget. But if you thought that was cool, wait till the end where I show you how you can finally record phone calls. But first, this next feature you guys are going to love. Now the lock screen has had a big update and I am here for it. Probably one of my favorite new features is let's say you open up Spotify and start jamming a track, then you open up the clock app and start a timer. Maybe you decide you want to record a voice note. Once all that is done, as soon as you enter the lock screen, you'll see this new now bar, which essentially shows all your current live activities that you can swipe between or tap on to open up even more controls. And in some cases, like with Spotify, if you tap on it, it opens this entire world window where you can see the album artwork and again there's a couple more different controls. I think what has got to be the best part of this now bar though is the placement. Like it's just so easy to control a bunch of different things with your thumb right at the bottom of the lock screen. Nice. Then just like the home screen, the lock screen also got a couple new widgets and by far my favorite one is the gallery widget. So once you add it, if you tap on the widget, you can either choose an album or specific images and I actually decided to go with a quote. And what is also really nice about this gallery widget is it can display PNGs. Another new one I definitely suggest you guys also check out is within Calendar and it is the countdown widget. So it's not only on your home screen but also your lock screen and it works in the exact same way where you just tap on it to select your date and the bam only 279 days till my birthday. <laughs> within the clock you now also get a couple new styles like these two animated options which are so cool but you can now also change the thickness. It's kind of weird to think this is has never been an option but at least now we have it and just those couple options and tweaks it makes a pretty big difference. I mean it kind of feels like Samsung's borrowing a page from Apple but that also happens vice versa and I think it's actually about who can now do it better. Another little update on the lock screen which you couldn't do before was reposition the clock except now there's just a much larger area to choose from which is so awesome especially if you have a custom wallpaper because then you can do things like this and have an analog clock in the moon. At the end of the day there's a ton of different options to get a crazy cool custom lock screen to really suit a specific theme or style you like. And from your lock screen if you swipe up to your home screen then swipe down you'll now see this brand new quick settings panel and it has some great new features. So to start off, there are two new things you got to know with the top panel because it is no longer a quick settings panel. So if you swipe down in the middle or to the left hand side, you only get your notifications. But if you swipe down on the right hand side, then you get this new quick settings panel, which hasn't had any major updates, but definitely some good changes. But before I show you those, you can actually toggle this back to how it used to look by going into these panel settings and right under here, you can toggle on together. That way, if you swipe down anywhere on the top, it'll be just like it's always been with your quick settings and notifications. But now onto one of the first updates. If you tap the edit icon right over here, you can choose to add as many of these quick settings as you like, which you can also still rearrange just like before, except now when you're done, you'll notice they're grouped in this section, which you can choose to expand and display way more or minimize and display just a couple. And you can also tap and hold different sections to then rearrange them. So now if you wanted to, you could have the quick settings panel as simple as that, 
or as detailed as that. Hmm. Honestly, the more customization Samsung gives us, the happier it makes me. But what also makes me happy is what you can now do with the home screen. All right, now we gotta talk about the brand new app icons because there's a new camera icon, new gallery icon, new clock icon. Literally every single Samsung app has had a facelift. But aside from that, they've added some other really cool options. So if you head into settings and tap on app and widget style, here you can actually adjust the app size. So whether you want it small, medium or large, you can now decide. And back inside those settings, you can also now choose to turn off widget labels as well as app labels. So you get a much cleaner, less cluttered looking home screen. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've been wanting this clean, minimal look for the longest time because it just looks so good. And something else I really dig that they changed is app folders. So now if you tap and hold down on an app folder, you'll see this enlarge option that enlarges the app folder. If you want to turn it back to the original size, just tap and hold again and select shrink and it's literally that easy. It's just such a nice way to get even more apps on your home screen. And with just those few app adjustments and removing labels, you can have a really slick looking setup. But what's possibly even slicker than that is the search bar is now at the bottom of the app drawer, which as you can imagine, is so much easier just opening up with your thumb and searching with one hand. By the way, if you're wondering where you can get these badass wallpapers from, then you can check out my website, hailsworld.com. Link down below. Now, we've all been there where we hear a song and it just slaps the spot. But if you don't know what the song is called, if you swipe down on the quick settings panel, you'll see this option song search. And while this isn't new to One UI 7, it's still something I just had to mention. So now, whenever you wanna find the name of the song, just swipe down and the bam, quick and easy. But besides this song search, there are actually three new features I quickly gotta mention. And the first one is found within the gallery. So usually if you wanna erase something from an image, you gotta go into the editing tools, but now straight on the image, you can just tap and hold down, select erase and poof, it'll generate another image with that object erased. Number two is let's say you open up the clock and start a timer and have a couple different live activities, just like I showed you earlier in the video. Well, now when you swipe to the home screen, you'll notice this in the status bar. And if you have a few activities going off simultaneously, you can actually swipe to switch between them, kind of like the now bar on the lock screen, except this is in your status bar. Nice. And for number three, if you open the clock app once again and tap and hold down on any of your alarms, you can select multiple alarms, then select this move icon and actually group them. You can then name the group like take out bins, for example. And once you've done that, not only will you see all your alarms related to taking out the bins, but you can turn all of them off at once or turn them all back on again by tapping this little icon. So if you're on holiday and want to be a rebel and not take your vitamins or take out the trash, just turn them off. It's kind of alarming how many new features there are on One UI 7, but there's even more. Okay, now we gotta talk about some cool changes. Like this one, if you're in the camera app and turn on motion photo, then snap a shot. If you now go into the gallery and open that picture you just took, you might notice this little motion photo drop down menu, where we now get the option between boomerang, slow mo, or to just turn off motion video. So if you want to liven things up a bit and add a cool effect, this boomerang, or maybe you caught something really funny in the moment and you just want to slow it down, well, now you can. Another really great change is found within settings under notification, then status bar. And right over here, show battery percentage. Yes, we've always had this option, but now it's got a brand new look. And compared to the old battery percentage symbol, I really dig it. It just looks so nice. Yeah. Then this cool change is slightly hidden away, but within settings, if you tap the search icon and minimize the keyboard, you'll notice this new search menu. It's divided into a bunch of different topics. And when you select one like personalization, you'll see all the different places and menus where you can find personalization settings. And we all know how the old charging graphic looked, right? Well, now they've changed that too and updated the look. And I personally think it looks much better. What's really cool as well is depending on the speed of your charger, you'll see green for fast charging or blue for super fast charging. But now I'm gonna open up the camera because it's got a few new upgrades too. Mm. 
So now when you open the camera app, you might notice a slightly cleaner look and this new icon. As soon as you tap it, it opens up all the different camera settings and you can slide right to reveal even more. This is a pretty small upgrade, but personally, I think it makes the whole design just feel so much better. What is also new is now when you tap any zoom option, instantly 30 times and 100 times zoom pops up. And speaking of zoom, if you go into pro video mode and start recording your video, you'll now notice this new zoom slider. And if I'm not mistaken, this is digitally zooming in and not swapping through the different lenses, but it just makes zooming so much easier. I wish it also worked and looked like this on the normal video mode, so Samsung, you know what you gotta do. And probably my favorite update to the camera, if you go to your exposure settings and choose to make your shots brighter or darker, when you exit the camera app or go to another mode, then re-enter that mode you'll see your exposure settings are locked and stay in place. But now, let me show you how we can finally record phone calls. Hello! Okay, so this is perfect for if anyone sus ever gives you a phone call. As soon as you answer it, you'll notice this new little record icon. And once you tap it, it'll start a three second countdown timer and then lets the other person know that the phone call is being recorded. This call is being recorded. But what is so cool about this is your Samsung not only records the call, but it also turns it into text. And what I mean by that is if you go into the phone application, then under recents and tap that phone call, right over here, you'll see view recording and transcription. Just like that, you can see the entire transcription of the phone call and even listen to the playback at the same time. And if you're wondering when all this crazy cool customization and update will be coming out, it should be coming out super soon for a bunch of different Samsung phones with the release of the S25. So make sure you subscribe and also because we're on the road to 3 million, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Toodles!